Okay, welcome to session five, part four. Okay. <clears throat> we now have there are two roll call votes. And um, here is how they go. So, uh, roll call one. Um, what happens is... Um, Yay is, uh, what's this? Um, the yay vote, which is, uh, is that right? Theta one. Yay votes theta one. <clears throat> uh, nay vote is theta three. And, uh, by the way, theta. One is two dollars ninety cents. Theta three is three fifteen. And in case you're interested, it was seventeen, seventeen to seventy two. Um, <clears throat> on roll call two, the yay vote. Was theta two, nay vote was theta three, so theta three once again is uh, three fifteen, theta two is three o five, and the outcome was uh, thirty two to sixty. Here is what we have now. Okay. <clears throat> so the first roll call vote was theta 3, which is 315, and versus theta 1, which was uh, 290. Okay. What is the midpoint? Of those two, remember for the uh, the the theory from uh, Crablin Rivers, so you're indifferent <clears throat> if you're right at the midpoint. If your ideal point is right at the midpoint, so the midpoint is uh, 3.025. Okay, so 3.025, and so what happens on this uh, this one? I'm gonna use green. So these, the ideal points in here, vote nay on um, roll call one. And these ideal points vote yay on roll call one. Okay. Next. <clears throat> Green for uh, roll call one. Okay, now I'm going to use red for roll call two. <clears throat> roll call two was, um, you know, we'll put theta two uh, as, th wait, that's three. There's 3.025. So, uh, 3.05, and this is theta 2. Okay, what's the midpoint? It's 3.10. So, on roll call 2, the nay was theta 3, so... These ideal points vote nay on roll call two, and these ideal points vote yay on call 
two. Okay. So here's what we have. Um, let me draw this green line. Nah, I'll go back to black. Why not? <clears throat> so what we have is, if the, the theory predicts this, that if your ideal point <clears throat> is less than 3.025, you will vote yay on roll call one and yay on roll call two. If your ideal point is in between 3.025, and 3.10, then you will vote nay on roll call one and yay on roll call two. If your ideal point is greater than 3.10, then you should vote nay on both of them. Okay. Now, uh, in a second, I'm going to use those facts to create a likelihood function. Uh, first, let me point out one thing, though. The theory predicts that everyone will vote either yay, yay, nay, yay, or nay, nay. The theory predicts that no one will vote yay, nay. That is, yay on the... First roll call vote, nay on the second. The good thing for Crable and Rivers is that didn't happen. There was no senator who voted yay, nay. So here's a potential way to falsify, you know, without even using statistics, uh, falsify their, the theory, and it survived. The, the Crable Rivers theory survived that potential uh, falsification. Okay, so we're good so far. <clears throat> okay, let's use this. Um, now, to create a likelihood function, what we're going to do is we're going to make our dependent variable how the senator voted, whether it's one of three categories. So call it big Y sub T. It either equals, you know, call this one, two, or three, whatever you like, or yay, call it yay, yay, nay, yay, nay, nay. But uh, the, the probability that this, the senator votes yay, yay, is the probability that his or her ideal point is less than 3.025. The probability that he or she votes nay, yay, is the probability the ideal point is in between 3.025 and 3.1. The probability votes nay, nay, is the probability that his ideal point is greater than uh, 3.10. Okay, so there we have like, uh, I guess the first two steps, or first definitely first first step of the recipe for creating a likelihood function. Okay, so let's do that now. Uh, let's actually write the likelihood function. All right, um, here is what we do. Let's see. Let's not forget. The ideal point, <clears throat> so we're going to say the probability the xi is either less than 3.025 in, in one of those three ranges, it's going to be a probability that that function that uh, is in between those ranges, okay? And that's how we're going to set up those, those probabilities, okay? So here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Let me define um, um, three categories. Um, uh, one way to do this could be I just could order all the senators so that the the first uh, what did I say something like thirty two uh, uh, voted nay nay. Uh, rather than that, I'm going to say that that I either I call it the set. Um, y, Y, um, or I within, um, what was it? Nay, nay, yay. 
NY or I N N A N A. So Y Y, that's the set, call it, that's the set of senators who voted Y Y. Okay, the numbers of the, that correspond to those senators. NY, senators voted nay on the first, yay on the second, and in, and so on. Okay, <clears throat> here's what I'm going to do. So the likelihood, so L, um, what are our parameters? We're going to estimate the gammas. Remember, that's a vector of about five. And we're also going to estimate sigma. Okay, I'll talk in a second about whether we can actually, if we run into the same problem as with a probit, whether we can identify the sigma. And that equals, first, we're just going to call, so big pi, the product of all the i's in that yy. Okay, so we're going to take all the senators. Um, I can't even remember what. Let's see, who voted nay, nay. It's going to be something like 60. No, no, uh, the ones who voted yay, yay. Uh, that's going to be something like 17. It's going to be about 17 senators, okay? We're going to list all those senators, and we're going to say the probability that they vote why, why, and this is equals the probability that their ideal point is less than 3.025, okay? So that equals um, probability, <clears throat> um, the ideal point, which is um, uh, zi, the vector transpose, times gamma uh, plus epsilon i, Error term for Senator I less than um, um, 3.025. Okay, now um, I don't want you to forget we assume that this, that uh, 3.025, that equaled. Um, Turns out we don't even need to use it, but theta 1 plus theta 3 divided by 2. Theta 1 plus theta 3 divided by 2 equals 3.025. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Close. Uh, brace. Okay. Times the product over all the I's in... In y. Okay, now the probability <clears throat> that a senator votes in y is the probability that his or her ideal point is greater than 3.025 but less than 3.10. Okay, so this is uh, probability. Um, Zi gamma plus epsilon i in uh, 3.025, uh, 3.10. And it doesn't really matter whether this, it's like we could sometimes call it a zero measure result, whether their ideal point is going to be exactly 3.10. That the probability that, that happens when that error term is continuous is zero. So we don't have to worry whether we use a square bracket or um, a parentheses up to it. I'll, I'll use a parentheses, but it doesn't matter. And then um, times big pi i n. In, in and this probability is the probability that the ideal point is greater than 3.10. Okay, so this equals probability zi gamma. Let's see, I guess I should transpose the zi plus epsilon i greater than um, 
and zero. Okay. All right. So we've now we've written the likely function. Okay. Sort of. Uh, now we're going to use the fact. We're going to have to simplify it a little. I'm going and then I'm going to use the fact that the uh, epsilon is uh, distributed normal. Okay. To what I'm going to end there. And I'm going to take that, simplify this uh, in the next uh, segment. Okay, uh, so I'll see you there.